Um, next, I just want to introduce uh, our project manager of the consultant team. His name is David Jula from Baker, and he's going to give the rest of the presentation from this point. Thanks, Andrea. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Jula. I work with Baker Engineering, and uh, I have almost 20 years experience in a wide range of water resources um, practice. And uh, I'm really excited to be working with you guys on this project, uh, especially something so important and that's going to affect your lives so much and, and future uh, generations to come. So it's a really good opportunity um, is the way we look at it. And, and a challenge, and we understand that. And we appreciate all the work you've done to, up to this point and your patience. It's been a long nine months, and, and we, we do understand that and do uh, empathize with that. So real quick about the project team, so you know who's, who's doing what. I work for Baker. We're the prime consultant. And we brought together this team, um, a multidisciplinary team, to handle all of the, all of the various um, aspects of this complex master plan that we're going to get into details more and more as we go through the presentation. But uh, as Andrea mentioned, he's with CDR Associates and their facil meeting facilitator. Uh, that's their lead role in this project. And we have Anderson Consulting out of Fort Collins. They've done a ton of work for Longmont. Um, so we brought them on the team just because of their, their intimate knowledge. Your own S2O uh, here, in, here in Lyons, who's been, who have been working on the flood um, ever since it happened tirelessly and uh, have a wealth of knowledge on the lion side. And Walsh Environmental is our lead for field assessments and ecological and biological um, uh, field assessments. And they're also doing that in other watersheds for other master plans. So that's a really good lessons learned from that that we can, that we can build off of and, and make a better product. And then we also have David Evan Associates uh, for surveying um, should, we, should we have the opportunity to go out and get some updated surveys as we work through the plan. No, um, in September the flood happened and it was it's response, 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 response. Just try to get things back, uh, back to as normal as they can be. And then we, as uh, Julie mentioned, we were looking at spring runoff, what's gonna happen next now that we're vulnerable. Uh, now we're getting into this longer term vision for the watershed and that's where the master plan is gonna come in. And then that, the main goal of that is to <coughs> be the framework for moving forward and implementing projects that achieve that, that long-term vision. Now, all along this time, you've been doing things. We know that. We have a lot of data. I'll, I'll get to a, a slide that demonstrates that. Um, and that is all being taken into account. We're not, we're not looking at, we're not trying to start over from square one. Um, we're, we are collecting all that information. Okay, so what is our study area? Um, this is the, this is the watershed boundary, as you can see, from the Connell Divide, and we're actually going down to the confluence with Boulder Creek. Um, over 540 square miles, and um, the colored areas are the corridors that will actually be end up in the plan with, with maps and, and real details and detailed projects. Uh, and that's about 54 miles of stream. Okay, so what I want to make sure people understand what's going to come out of this. Um, as, as Reed and Julie and, and Andrea all said, can't say it enough, it's a holistic vision for the watershed. We all know that what happens in the upper end affect the bottom and, and, and vice versa. You can affect people upstream from you. Um, one thing that's unique about this one is, is all the master plans I've done, there's always a public engagement. There's always, there's always an opportunity for public to weigh in on it. But this one, uh, this is above and beyond. We're, we're coming to you early. Um, very early, in fact. We've only been working on this for about five, six weeks, and we're just getting to the point where we've just collected all the data. We haven't even produced anything yet. I'm, I'm showing you like what we've done. I'll, I'll be able to show you what we've done, but the real meat of that uh, isn't there yet. But we're getting you involved now, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how we want to keep you involved throughout so that the public is informing this master plan as much as possible. Um, as I mentioned, there, we're going to have field assessments that look at the post-flood conditions. And I'll, I'll get into a little more detail on that. And then we're going to identify what the, the best available information for the flood hazards and where those data gaps exist. Now, uh, I know uh, as, we, as we go through this, we're going to answer a lot of the questions. Uh, the floodplain and floodway, um, you know, this, this study, due to time frame, which we'll talk about in a little bit, isn't, 
isn't going to get a new FEMA study. I'm just going to tell you right now. You're not going to have new, all new, shiny, brand new analysis and maps for this. Um, and we'll talk about that and why a little bit. But part of the plan will be setting a plan in place for getting FEMA to update those maps and, and finding ways to do that. Uh, and, but then ultimately what we want is a list of projects that are actionable and implementable and so that um, we can get the funding in place and, and execute the plan. So what will it not do? This is, these are some common misconceptions that we've heard along the way. People are worried that this plan's gonna come in and it's gonna undo local policies and someone's gonna you know, take imminent domain over your property or something. That's, that's not true. It doesn't change any of the normal processes. It's a plan. It's a plan that every community, every jurisdiction is still going to have to go through the normal process and the normal public involvement to, to get anything implemented. It's not going to change things overnight. This is a long-term solution. It's not going to override any existing plans that people have out there. The you know, open space management plan is a good ex example. You know, um, it's not going to override any of those. It, but, and it's going to try to be informed by those existing plans so that they are in, in, in um, concert with each other. And nothing's really going to happen until we find funding for this. Right now it's going to be a plan, and that's all All plan is. It's, it's shelf art, shelf art until you um, find money to actually implement it and start doing something about it. And that's when the real detailed um, design and, and, and the real answers come. Uh, and and like, I, like I mentioned, it's just in the time frame we have and the resources, um, it's not going to update your FEMA flood, flood maps and therefore it's not going to have flood insurance implications mm -hmm. at this time. That's going to be years down the road. Um, so those are just to clear up some of those common misconceptions. Uh, I, I did want to just, you know, when we talk about holistic, what, what are we talking about? What are we trying to balance? As we look at solutions inside the watershed, um, you know, from stream stability to uh, the economic recovery and resiliency overall of the communities, uh, flood mitigation obviously is a is a major component to, to this. Um, but then also looking at protecting your infrastructure from future events, and, and and while still keeping in mind recreation, I mean that's that's a very important issue in in this town. It, it is in Longmont too. Um, you know, that's that's. That's a big part of what your, what your local economy thrives on. But also, and then also looking at the biological and the environmental, having stream connectivity, being able to uh, you know, have the fish come back that were all washed out to Nebraska or wherever they, wherever they went. So uh, like I mentioned, we, will, we really will want you involved in the public process. So let's talk schedule. I said it was an aggressive schedule. Uh, a typical master plan usually takes anywhere from a year to three years. I, I, know, I know ones that have gone on five years. Um, and, and it starts off with, you know, from scratch with studying everything the way it is today, identifying the problems, coming up with alternatives, and, and, and so on and so forth until you get to the plan. We're being very aggressive on this, uh, you know, for, for a couple of reasons. One, I mentioned before, it's been nine months. People, we need to have a plan in place so that people can start doing things whenever, whenever we do find the funding and do find the, the means to get it done. And that, this is going to allow our state representatives um, from the governor's office and, and above to be able to go to the feds now while the money's available and say, look, we have a plan, we have a cost, bring it. Let's get this done. We're ready to go. And, and, that's, and that's, how you, that's how you get it done in this environment. Um, there's, a, there's a window that does close in post-disasters where, you know, a hurricane hits this fall, and all of a sudden, people are focused elsewhere. Um, so that's that's the reason for being so aggressive on this schedule. Um, so how we're gonna this this outlines that what we're trying to have is um, a draft plan in July by the end of July, and then a final plan by the end of September. Um, that's very aggressive, like I said, and we're already running into some delays with the field work. The spring runoff is not allowing us to do that job like we should properly. So our field crews have been on hold for the last three weeks or so. So we're already looking at, you know, we're probably going to have to slide that a little bit, but, um, but hopefully not too much. So where are we going to engage you, the public, in this process? Right here we are right now. 
with these kickoff meetings. Um, we, we did want to get out in front of you as soon as possible, let you know the process is, is starting, it's ongoing, and give you an idea of what the plan is. And then, like I said, get this, take this opportunity to show you how you can help us uh, make your plan the best it can be. And then um, the, the plan is once we have the drafts and there's a little more tangible and we can really sink our teeth into something and we have some, some draft concepts, so maybe approaches throughout specific reaches, um, having those more focused meetings, and that's what Andrea talked about before, getting you to sign up for the ones, for, for the areas that you're interested in so that you're on those lists, you get invited to those follow-up meetings and have more dialogue uh, on the actual solutions and weigh in on it. And then, um, you know, when we do get to a point where there's a final master plan, there will be another opportunity to, to interact with you and, and present it to you so you understand fully what's in it and how we got to the decisions we came to. But all through this process, uh, we, we have other ways for you to do it, which we'll talk about in more detail towards the end, and Andrea will come back up to touch on those. But uh, our, our meetings are open to the public every other week. We're gonna have a website that you can actually, it's interactive, you can go in and put comments. We have a specific email just for this master plan that you can send us things in, send us pictures, whatever you want. Um, and, and we have a, a hotline if you want to talk to a person. If you don't want to, don't want to go the technology route, you can call somebody and we'll get you to the right person to get you answers. Um, but like I said, we'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. So what have we done so far? Uh, a large part of what we've done is the data collection. Um, the fair, one of the first things we did was we did interviews with all the St. Grand Creek Coalition to talk about, you know, what is your, you know, what is your um, jurisdiction or entity? Um, what's your experience with the flood? What's your experience with the St. Grand watershed? What are people telling? What are you hearing out there? Like I said earlier, we, we're not looking to start from scratch. You guys have had a ton of conversations, retreats. Um, you, you, you have long range uh, recovery plans for, for lines. Longmont has basically uh, a whole lot of conceptual design already done for what they want, they want to see happen in their um, jurisdiction. So collecting all that information and figure out where we, where we have gaps, where we have really good data. Um, but the one thing that was common from all of them was the public input in this is critical. Um, and like I said, that's why it has such a robust um, public engagement aspect to this. Uh, you mentioned, someone mentioned the, the inaccuracy of, of data. Uh, we are fortunate to have some really good data in, in this whole watershed. We have pre and post LIDAR. For those of you who don't know what LIDAR is, it's a light detection and ranging. It's a technology, it's basically a laser on a plane, fly overhead, shoots beams from the returns. They can, they can get the terrain of the ground. It's a, it's a, it's a topographic data set. Um, there's pre, and it was done in 2011, 2012. FEMA flew that. Um, it was actually Baker. Baker was part of that team that did that. And then uh, right after the flood, they teamed with USGS and got post-flood LIDAR, um, which is great. It's, it's some really, really good information, and we can do some cool stuff with it that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, there, there is one drawback. The, it was done so soon after the flood that it doesn't reflect a lot of things that people have been doing since then. You know, everybody's been in the stream since then. We all know that. And so we have to, we have to keep that in mind when we're lo looking at it and using it. But there are some really good, good uses for it. Uh, right now, there's draft hydrology that CWCD and CDOT have teamed together um, to come up with. CDOT didn't have a lot of good information up in the mountains. So they're doing uh, rainfall runoff modeling to come up with hydrology. And for those of you who don't know the difference between hydrology and hydraulics, hydrology is how much water. And hydraulics is really the physical characteristics once the water's into the into the river system, the stream system. Um, we've collected uh, the hydraulic modeling, and we have everything from the original 1972 Army Corps of Engineers study, which is obviously well out of date, um, to uh, CWCB did recovering mapping, uh, recovery mapping, doing some uh, doing some quick quick calculations um, that, that uses the post flood lidar. And so we have those where we're documenting, we're evaluating what we're going to do, figuring out where the gaps are. Um, and like I said, Longmont already has, has really good modeling data all through their town. And then the GIS, we have a ton of GIS information. Um, we also have aerials, obviously, that show, show the effects. I'm sure you've all looked at Google Earth plenty since this flood has happened. Uh, and just, you know, it's very, 
very uh, awe-inspiring, but you can really, really see what, what happened from that big picture. Um, we were, we've been working with Boulder County since um, November on, on post-flood issues and, and that um, getting ready for spring runoff. So we already had a GIS database with a ton of information, all the NRCS exigent sites, um, a lot of the information that came from the, the, the county did public meetings and gathered information. We have all that in the, in the GIS. You can click on it and see what, what so-and-so said happened on their, on their site. Um, the Sean Cronin from, from the uh, Water Conservancy District pointed us to some really good information on the um, irrigation diversion inventory. Uh, we have all of that. We have, we, have, we have a ton of information, and that's going to be really helpful as you move forward when you're implementing this plan. It's going to be something that's just a deliverable with the master plan. Uh, so I mentioned before <laughs> existing plans. I Don't try to read it. You'll, you'll strain your eyes. Um, you know, we thought <laughs> when we first, when, when we uh, proposed on it, it was, uh, I think it said there were 12 existing plans that they wanted evaluated and made sure that are going to inform the plan so that there's like I mentioned before, open space management plan or, or the LRAP and Lions, all of those things. Nobody wants, everybody wants to make sure that the effort that's been done to date is, good, is getting into the plan. Um, and we've gotten you know, more than a dozen. We're, we're at 40, and every time we talk to somebody new, we get sent more plans, um, which is good. It's great. It's, it's great information. And what we're doing with these is what we call a plan roll-up, where, um, where we're reading through them, and we're looking at common themes, things that contradict, um, and, and, and just quantifying them. Uh, I thought about showing you the spreadsheet, but it's so, so wide and big that it looks even smaller than this. So it's just for effect. Um, we, are, we are taking a lot into account. I uh, want to touch a little bit on what field assessment, um, both from a flood risk and an ecological and biological health of the, of the watershed and the, and the waterways within it. Um, we've been delayed due to spring runoff, as I mentioned. Uh, we can't really tell if there's any fish habitat there when it's you know, running it, running, running as high as it does this time of year. Um, but we're ready to get out there in the field as soon as it is and, and get back on track with, with that task. Um, another thing we get, we're doing is the geomorphology. That's the study of the characteristics of the stream, the history of the stream, where the stream wants to go, where it's been, where it is now, where it wants to go. Um, looking at old aerials. Um, what I mentioned before with that pre and post LIDAR, we can, we can merge those data sets and we can see, this is a, just a screenshot, we have this for the whole watershed. And um, the red is where sediment was deposited and the green is erosion. So you really start to see exactly what happened um, when, when we're getting into those reaches and we can start to predict where it wants to go and that's gonna help us inform what the more stable stream alignment could be. Now, we of course then have to take that and start weighing it with, well, What's that? Whose property does that affect? What are they? What does everybody want? Uh, and, and those types of things. But it's going to. Those are. That's how one way we're going to get to. It. Uh, the field assessment will also inform some of that. Um, the, the, the natural tendency of the stream. Okay. So how are we going to present this? How are we going to take this 500 some square mile watershed and break it into bite-sized pieces that we can really dive into? and have meaningful conversations um, while keeping the, the holistic watershed-wide approach um, uh, in mind so that everything is connected. So what we've done is we've broken it up into seven representative reaches that have common themes or jurisdictions. Um, and I'm going to go through each of them in a little more detail. So reach one and two, um, we're down here at the confluence with Boulder Creek, uh, uh, reach one that goes up to the uh, corporate limits for the town of Longmont, city of Longmont. And then uh, reach two is basically corporate limit to corporate limit through Longmont. And we lump them together because um, Longmont has a lot of interest down here. And we, we are talking to Weld County too for, in their areas, but there's not, there's not a lot going on down there. This, is, uh, this has a lot of gravel, gravel pits on the south side. As soon as it came through county, uh, Weld County Road 1, or depending on which side you're on. Um, it's Weld County Road 1, and Ken, what is it in Longmont? Does it have a different name? <laughs> County, Li County Line Road. As soon as it came out of there, it went bam, right up, right south into some gravel pits, and then just went that way and abandoned its actual channel. Um, so definitely some questions on what to do with that there. 
Um, through Longmont, as I mentioned, they've been working diligently to, to look at, assess what happened during the flood and what to do about it. And they already have a conceptual design of a 100-year channel all through town, um, which is great. I mean, we, that, that could be what we just drop into the plan for, for that portion. Or maybe we're going to talk more about it. We're, we're, we're working through that with them now. Reach 3 is uh, from Lyons to Longmont. Uh, this is where Boulder County open space is. A lot of private property, a lot of Boulder uh, County residents. And um, once again, uh, a lot of gravel, gravel pit um, ponds. And there were, there were definitely issues with mixing of the creek and the, and, and the ponds and things going where they weren't supposed to go. Um, had, had a real, real big issue there where it got off north and it, it basically abandoned its channel again until it came back into Longmont, unfortunately, through people's uh, neighborhoods that weren't even in the 500 year floodplain. So you can imagine their surprise when they were waist deep in mud evacuating their houses uh, when they didn't even think they were in, in the in any floodplain. Then reaches four and five, um, lines, you know, this is the epicenter of the flood, obviously the, 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 the highest level of damage. Um, all kinds of all kinds of elements to this to this reach. Uh, it's gonna be real intense, but luckily we have a good jump start on it with all the work that everybody's done locally. Um, to date, and with S2O on our, on our team, they're, they're really leading up the, the interaction on these. Um, and then we also, Reach 5 is what we, whoops, Reach 5 is uh, basically, well, Reach 4 we designated it's from like CMEX plant up north St. Brain to Apple Valley. I, I know it's not part of lines, but it's, I know a lot of people consider it, you know, all the same, same type of area. And then the South St. Brain up to the, um, up to the mine or, or the choke in the canyon and then reach five is from apple valley up to button rock reservoir and since we are in lions um you know this this meeting was for everybody on the western side of the watershed that wanted to come to this meeting versus the longmont meeting but since we're in lions i just i wanted scott to say a little something about you know what what, what we have integrated last two reaches uh the, in, in the watershed is the South St. Brand through, so, <clears throat> sorry, South St. Brand through the canyon, and, um, and you know, basically it's, it's the main thing in there is Highway 7. Um, and then also Raymond, obviously, and, which has its own set of issues. I, I went to a meeting last week, I recognized some of you from that meeting, and it was really, really good to, to get out there and see what kind of issues you're dealing with up in Raymond, and the, and the I, I, we get it, the private, private bridges you need a solution on that you need the information to inform you on what what best to do with that so you can move forward and get back into your homes um, and to understand you know the level of patience that you did show nine months into this um, is, is admirable mm -hmm. 